Okay, now here we are in our study of second order differential equations. We should have, or you should have already had a look at what we call homogeneous second order linear differential equations. That's examples 15, 16, and 17. Uh, and now we come to the next step along the way, which is such a good title. Uh, I'm going to bring it in with a big fanfare. So we have here non homogeneous second order linear differential equations. It's got to be one of my favourite lesson headings of all time. Non-homogeneous second order linear differential equations. It's a, it's a second order differential equation because we have uh, not just the function y and the first derivative, we also have the second derivatives in our equation. That makes it second order. Um, and it's non-homogeneous because the left-hand side of the equation is not equal to zero. And previously, we had zero on the right-hand side. That makes it homogeneous. It makes them all the same. Now what we're going to find is that there's some function in x on the right-hand side, which uh, complicates things. It means we have to construct possible solutions uh, with uh, additional uh, expressions in, or terms in x. So we have to determine a little bit about how to do this process. And the good news is that what we learned to do for the homogeneous uh, differential equations still holds. So the first thing that we would do is we're going to find the general solution as though f of x was here, as though it was a homogeneous differential equation. This time, we're really going to call that the complementary function. The complementary function uh, is what we would have called the general solution. Okay. We're going to introduce a second function, and that's dependent on what we've got here on the right-hand side. Depending on what it is, we call it the particular integral. Okay. Now, the particular solution that we're going to use is called the particular integral, and it is going to depend, I'll tell you in a minute, about the nature of the right-hand side. Particular integral. The combined solution, the solution to the uh, differential equation is the sum of both of them. So the general solution, the, it's still general because we've still got constant terms in it. Um, we still don't have, uh, we can, uh, and we'll talk about particular solutions later on. It's still a general solution. It's the sum of the complementary function and the particular integral. So it sounds a wee bit more complex, but as long as you follow the steps, uh, then it should work out okay. So let's have a look at a, one bit of information you're going to need to use, and that is, what does your particular integral look like? Well, it depends on the nature of it. If your particular integral is a polynomial, then, as we're going to see, we'll use a general form uh, which is going to have, depending on the power of it, you know, it might look like that. We're going to say, okay, our solution is going to have uh, powers of x in it. If it's a trig function, we're only going to deal with sine and cosine functions. So we're going to uh, basically have the idea that it could be a combination uh, it might be a sine x plus b uh, sine x. But we're going to have multiples of uh, sine and cos. So the nature of it is going to depend exponential. We're going to have some kind of exponential uh, function going on here maybe with a, a, a constant term. We'll have a look at examples of each of these in turn. So your particular in integral will depend on what you start with in the equation. Okay. So uh, the first example is here where f of x is a polynomial function. Um, yp I have uh, put here as a, the, the function in y, which is a particular integral. And as you can see here, it's a, a slightly formal way of just saying we're going to construct a, a polynomial function of some power n, which matches the order of f of x. Um, so if on the right-hand side it's just x plus 3, and, and the order, the highest order is x, then you'll just start with an x term as well. And we have all these a to the a and a and minus 1. They're just constant terms, okay? So let's have a look at, at how we might solve one a, a non-homogeneous differential equation where we've got a right-hand side, an f of x, which is a polynomial function. What we do is we go ahead and solve, first of all, step one, solve as though 
we are trying to solve the homogeneous as though it's equal to zero. So we want to find our auxiliary equation, and we're going to assume uh, the fact that we've got d2y by dx squared. So we're going to have m squared minus 5m uh, plus 4 equals 0. So we construct our quadratic equation in that way. And so we're saying here that m, well, how do you factorize that? m minus 4 and m minus 1 equals 0. And we're going to have a solution, m minus 4 equals 0, or m minus 1 equals 0, m equals 4, or m equals 1. You can see we've got two real roots. If you uh, wanted to check that, of course, we've got b squared minus 4ac equals 0. Uh, we know that we're going to get that, and we should have maybe checked that before. We've got a negative 5 squared, 25 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 4. Uh, it's not equal to zero anyway, so it's just we're going to work that out. It's 25 minus 16, uh, which is 9. Because it's a real, distinct real root, and we've got that from either this here, or we've got it from the fact that we've worked out that we've got two distinct real answers. What we can tell is that we're going to use the form of the, the what was the general solution. Uh, we've got y equals a times e to the m1x plus b e to the m2x. We're going to use that form there where there's two separate exponential functions and we've got the constant terms a and b. So what does that mean? It means that our what would be our general solution? We would substitute, doesn't matter which one, we'll call the smaller one m1 and the larger one m2. Now, we're not going to call it the general solution this time. We're going to call it the complementary function. The complementary function is in this form here. So it's going to be y is equal to a times e to the 1x, e to the m1, we're going to call 1, plus b times e to the power m2x, I've called m24, so it's e to the 4x, and there is our complementary function. Okay, we'll bag that, and we're going to see that in the final answer. So this is the new bit coming up. Uh, we don't have a homogeneous equation. We've, we've, we've assumed uh, that it actually is. We've assumed at the moment that we've got equal zero. Oops. Um, when, in fact, we don't. We've actually got ax squared plus d. So we've got a polynomial function on the right-hand side. So for our particular integral, Try. So we're kind of uh, we're teasing this out. We us I usually say try. Uh, so let's see if this will work. Well, what form are we going to take? I'm going to use y p for the, a function, the particular function of y, and we've got an x squared. It's, it started off as x squared, uh, ax squared plus d. So we need an x squared term, an x term, and a constant term. We've already bagged the the we've got a and b in our complementary function. So if we have to use other constants, we can use, I'm going to start at c. So we've got some constant c, which is the coefficient of an x squared term. But we've got, we might have an x term, we might have a constant term. We don't know, but we're going to create a template which is based upon the fact that we had 8x squared plus 3 on our right hand side. So, once we've, you've got your template, you're going to then differentiate, because we're going to substitute this in for y. Okay, we're really trying to say this is the shape of the uh, the function y. So dy by dx is going to be 
3cx plus d, if we differentiated that function, and the second derivative, d2y by dx squared, that would be 2c. Now you keep, well, we only need the first two, it's a second order differential equation. So we've got an expression for y, dy by dx, and the uh, d2y by dx squared. So what we do is, we're going to substitute this into the original equation. This whole thing here. Substitute it all. So we're going to substitute that into equation one, we'll call it. Substitute into one, which said originally uh, second derivative minus five times the first derivative. 4y is equal to 8x squared plus 3. So we've defined now our particular integral, uh, these three things here. So we're going to substitute in the second derivative, says 2c. So we can say 2c minus 5 times dy by dx was defined as 2cx plus d, and then plus 4 times y, which is cx squared plus dx plus, C, uh, plus e is equal to 8x squared plus 3. So we'll substitute uh, these expressions in for y, dy by dx, and d2y by dx squared, and we can tidy this up, and we're going to compare the left and right-hand sides. So if I multiply it by negative 5, I'm going to end up with your negative 10cx minus 5d plus 4cx squared plus 4dx plus 4e equals 8x squared plus 3. And let's try and bring together the x squared, x and constant terms. So we're going to match up uh, what we've got, x squared terms, where have we got them? So there's my x squared term here. So I've only got one, so that's 4cx squared. Let's line up my x terms. I've got negative 10cx, and I've got plus 4dx. I'm going to take a common factor of x, and I'm going to write... Uh, let's put a bracket in. So here's x, and I've got 4d minus 10c. Okay, see what I did there? I've got 4dx and minus 10cx, and I've put them there. Let me just make that a wee bit clearer. 10c times x. Okay, and the terms that are remaining would be constant terms. I've got positive 2c minus 5d and plus 4e. They all fit as the constant term. 2c, doesn't matter what order, minus 5d plus 4e. And that still all is equal to 8x squared plus 3. So, now that we can compare the left and right hand sides. Okay. Compare coefficients, we could say. In other words, 4cx squared has to equal 8x squared. 4cx squared equals 8x squared, therefore, 4c equals 8, and c will be 2. Okay? We can compare the x coefficients. Well, there isn't an x term on the right-hand side, which means that 4d minus 10cx equals 0x. In other words, 4d minus 10c equals 0. We already know that c is 2. which means that 4d is 20, so d has to have the value 5. And we can then uh, compare also the constant terms. So I've got 2c minus 5d plus 4e is equal to 3. That's the constant term on the right-hand side. We've now got the values for c and d. 2 lots of 2 is 4, minus 5 times 5 is 25, 
plus 4e equals 3. Um, and if we rearrange that, we're going to get 4e is equal to 28 minus 4, which is 24. So e is going to have the value 6. You can uh, make sure that you agree with that. So we've worked out the value of our constant terms. Where did they come from? What is C, D, and E, remember? C, D, and E are the constant terms to do with the proposed particular integral. And that's what we'll find. So we can say that the particular integral in this case, I, oops, get rid of that, i.e. particular integral that we're going to use is y equals, so c was the coefficient, I'll just write it out again so that you remember, that was what we proposed. So we're really saying that a particular integral is going to be, what did we say c was? 2. 2x squared plus 5x plus 6. So having taken that kind of template, we've shown that uh, th this particular version of the template works for our differential equation and interestingly that's not the answer that's part of the answer so our general solution now is actually going to be our complementary function which we've with our old general solution sorry if this is a bit confusing but these are the terms we're going to use for second order. We're going to take, first of all, y equals, what did we work out way back? We worked out that we're going to be a e to the power 1x plus b times e to the power 4x, that's our complementary function, plus we're going to add on to that our particular integral. And that in its entirety, is actually the general solution to that second order differential equation. So that's the, the method that we use when and only when the f of x term at the beginning uh, on the right hand side is a polynomial. And we set our particular integral as a, a, a matching polynomial with constant terms, some various constants as our coefficients, matching the, the highest power. Okay, So you can have a go at doing some of that. Uh, the other examples are going to be what happens when f of x is a trigonometric term and when it's an exponential term. So you can have a check on that uh, once you've had a practice at doing the polynomial ones. Okay, thanks for listening.